Wisconsin Eye's 2014 election coverage is brought to you by the Wisconsin Hospital Association. For over 90 years, a valued voice for Wisconsin hospitals, supporting high quality, high value care in communities like yours. Wisconsin is at the Brown County Library interviewing candidates in the 2014 elections. We're interviewing Mr. Shea Sortwell of Green Bay. He's an independent candidate in Assembly District 90. Shea, welcome to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you, sir. And uh, Wisconsin Eye appreciates the support of the Wisconsin Hospital Association, which represents more than 139 hospitals and health systems for making these candidate interviews possible. Is this your first run for state office, Shea? For state office, yes. I was on Green Bay City Council before. You were? Yes. Okay. Okay, um, then give us the short version of your background, please. Uh, short version of my background. Well, uh, I was on Green Bay City Council a couple years back. Um, I am in the Army Reserve, Sergeant in the United States Army Reserve, and I got a family, uh, three kids. The youngest is just over six months old now. <laughs> so get, I bring him along a lot of times. <laughs> okay. And then uh, let's see, got, got a wife, uh, Krista, been married seven years. What do you do? Uh, on the civilian side, I'm. Uh, do kind of the same thing I do in the ar on the Army side because I'm in the Chemical Corps in the Army and so I work with uh, highly hazardous chemicals in a chemical factory okay. on the civilian side. Well, two questions. Um, any particular issue draw you into this race? And number two, why is it independent? So sure. any particular issues? Or? Uh, there's actually a couple big issues and, and you know, I was, I was reading through some of the questions you had here and, you know, Obviously, a lot of those are kind of big state issues, but there's a lot of more local issues that no one is really talking about, especially, you know, either of the other two candidates in this race. I mean, the floodplain issue is a huge issue here in Green Bay. Go ahead. I mean, the floodplains, there are literally people in the city of Green Bay losing their homes over the outrageous prices of the uh, flood insurance program uh, mandated by the federal government where you know people with a hundred thousand hundred fifty thousand dollar home are paying three thousand dollars a year just for flood insurance and they're skyrocketing and been promised that they're going to go up more and more and more um, that's something we really need to deal with we did cut talk with congressman ribble a little bit about it and there is some things they're trying to do about that but there's some things we can do at the state level too including offering uh, tax credits and tax deductions to try to help people with that that's a huge deal right there yeah. um, Another thing I really would like to look into is, you know, Governor Walker has talked about uh, trying to lower the tax burden on people, and I think one thing that we really ought to investigate as, as an option for lowering the tax burden is the sales tax on our utility bills. I mean, the entire idea of what we pay sales tax on is we don't pay it on the necessities. We don't pay it on food. That's the entire idea of it. But you want to take that, buy that hamburger and take it home. Now you've got to cook it, and now you're paying sales tax on it. And I just don't think that that makes any sense. I think if we, if we, if we're looking at trying to adjust taxes, I think that that would be another great option to look at in eliminating the sales tax on our utility bills, both for ourselves and also for businesses. Manufacturers already have that exemption, but I think it'd be a great idea for you know regular businesses like. A, there's a gentleman I was talking to the other day who has a small little repair shop for instruments down on Broadway. And, you know, he pays sales tax just to have his lights and everything just to operate. And I don't think that that's really right to have something so, such a bare necessity in, in today's society to be able to have light bulbs. I just don't think that that's right. And I think if we're looking to lower the tax burden, I think that was a great option to look at. Well, Shay, you've obviously given uh, some thought to a lot of these issues, yeah. state and local. Um, why aren't you an R or a D? Why are you an independent? Oh, because I think that's what the people want. I think the people are kind of fed up with Republicans and Democrats. And you know what? I, I'm not saying all Republicans or Democrats are bad. Um, I have some good friends on the Republican side. Um, I've known them for many years. Um, and there's good de Democrats out there, too. I, I always had a lot of respect for um, uh, Bob Ziegelbauer. Obviously, the last time he was in, he was an independent. Yes. And I think that maybe, maybe he also saw some of that shift going on in the Mantuak area. Um, but I, I think part of the problem is, is when, when you do the whole run Republican Democrat thing, and, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that necessarily, but you get this team mentality. And I've even seen that now um, while I've been running. There's been several people who um, I, I've talked to and known for years who I've you know looked to for, for support in this. And some of them, because they're so... Uh, loyal, I guess you want to call it, to their party, 
they're not willing to actually consider the positions that you hold all the time. But at the same time, but the rank and file people are. I tell you, I've been knocking on doors, talking to people, and people are excited when I talk to them. When when I bring up issues, you know, I'll bring up a personal bring up personal privacy issues, and bring up some of the things that the incumbent Eric Gingrich has done that are comp are just not in support of that, even though Democrats traditionally are supportive of that. And because I'm running independent, they're willing to talk to me. If I was a Republican, a lot of these pretty strong Democrats, rank and file, you know, public public uh, people. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't even talk to me because, well, you're a Republican, but because I'm independent, they're willing to talk to me and hear what I have to say. So, you know, whatever the result of this all is, I think it's great that I actually have a chance to speak with everybody. They're all willing to actually listen to what I have to say. Cool. Let's walk through a few state issues. Um, one of the biggest items in the next state budget is going to be funding of schools. Sure. Um, if you're a member of the assembly, what's <coughs> going to be your priorities in, in terms of the next debate over funding of public schools? Um, yeah, obviously we've, we've dealt with some pretty um, significant changes over the last couple of years with uh, some of the changes both with the Act 10 collective bargaining stuff as well as just kind of partnered with that was the, was the cutting of funding in order to enable, but at the same time with the Act 10 they could make up a lot of those costs. So um, th the problem is, is too often I think we look at this as kind of a, a blanket policy and so we say okay we're going to give X, not, X amount of dollars per student and I think we really need to actually consider whether the formula needs to be changed in that to focus in on areas that may actually need prioritization on that and I'm not saying you know money fixes everything because you know I I've been I've been to a couple different school districts in in my time and I was in one that was dirt poor when I was younger and and they were just but they were years ahead of them. another one that I went to later that as I was actually two years ahead of a, of the rich school district when I moved there so it's it's not just about funding but we do need to consider we do need to consider that and see if we need to change the formula to um, if you got a, a more a less affluent, rather a less affluent district, we may need to change the state funding a little bit to kind of balance that a little bit for the children. Do you think Act 10 was generally good public policy? <clears throat> Act 10, generally speaking, generally speaking I, I would say that there was a lot of good that came out of it. That being said, um, it was done very badly and I'm honestly I place the blame as much on the Democrats on that as I do on the Republicans because um, if you look at the records you look at what happened in that event um, <laughs> they, they all ended up acting a little bit like children on that on that issue and there was a lot of things that didn't quite make sense to me why we did it quite the way we did for instance um, Correctional officers, you know, prison exempt. prison officers. They, no, they're they, not exempt. They're not exempt. Yeah, they were right. They're treated. They're Police treated the same officers, way. firefighters. Exempt. Yeah, exactly. I, and it's like, well, you're correct. Don't they deal almost entirely in the same way with the same type of clients, as it were, with, as the police officers? Um, you know, they they lost protective status, and I'm sorry. You know, I. I I kind of of the mindset that you know someone after 20 years you know so even if he gets in at say 20 he's 40 years old he probably doesn't have all that many more years that I I personally feel comfortable with them wrestling down some gang banning here that's not cooperating at our prisons so I, I think we need to re-examine some of that and and figure out ways to make it make more sense and maybe include them in the same way that we include you know the police officers because I do I do see those as different and I wouldn't support changing that and, and taking away those those bargainings. What about uh, how do you feel about uh, uh, private school choice and voucher program? Do you support it? Um, I like the idea. I, I think it's I think giving people more ability to control how their tax dollars are spent. And that's really what it is. Is a good idea. That at the same time, I'm not a fan of the of the voucher program the way it's currently arranged. And the primary reason for that is is you already see the beginnings of too much state control, too much government control over the private schools. There's, I've already seen that even with the school choice people, I, I, got, I even got a questionnaire from them. You know, like you know, from a lot of groups, you can, candidates get questionnaires. They ask you, and they asked about uh, wanting to put state standards in place over the schools receiving these fundings. And the problem is, is when did we stop trusting parents? When, you know, whether it's public schools or private schools or whatever, it, it doesn't matter. Why are we not trusting parents to choose the best school for their children and to figure out if the school is working for their children? Because, and, and this is part of like the common core and all the other issues that come up, 
it's not so much that we have that we that we need standards as far as coming down from higher up. What we need is parents that are actually involved because you know what, we can have a, we grade schools here in the state of Wisconsin, public schools. We yes. say okay, they're they're a failing school, they're a succeeding school, that kind of thing. Well, you know what, that really doesn't matter. What matters is is the school working for my child, whether it's a public school or a private school, because you know I could have a failing school that you know overall it's doing very badly, but it's doing very well for my child. Same thing on the other side, I could have a school that's doing great, you know, as as a whole we can see that they're succeeding for the district that they're in, but they may be and they may be failing for my child. And so what we need is more parental involvement. And say, is this working for my child? And so let's rely on the parents to make those decisions, not okay. the state. Well, you mentioned Common Core. Do you, yeah. Governor Walker wants those repealed in Wisconsin. <clears throat> uh, how do you feel about what the governor wants? I, I, I agree with repealing Common Core. I p agree with actually, yeah, well, I, I, would, I would go further than that, though, and say I would support repealing a lot of these higher level standards and let the districts figure it out for themselves. They're, they are elected officials, school boards are, okay. and they should be able to figure out what is going to work for our districts, work for our children. You know, if we want to have some sort of standardized testing just to try to figure out where the children are, I'm okay with that. I'm not a big fan of the fact that we take a Wisconsin-specific test because then what are we really comparing ourselves to? Oh, we're doing great. Well, compared to who? How do we know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would think if we're going to keep doing that, and I, I do like that idea of having some sort of standardized test just so we kind of get some kind of gauge. Um, we really ought to be going with like the Iowa tests or the CAT tests or some sort of national test. We really have real comparisons. Okay. Uh, transportation funding. There's mm -hmm. one estimate by the Taxpayers Alliance that says if we budget at the 2013 levels for the next 10 years for transportation, we're $2 billion short. How mm -hmm. would you make up that deficit? <laughs> Well, it, it's it's hard to say exactly because a lot a lot of times you have to really crunch the numbers, and that's one thing I think that is lacking in our state government. You know, when I was on city council, we have a several you know, hundred or um, it's been a couple of years now, so I'm trying to remember. It was either hundred million or two hundred million dollar budget for the city of Green Bay, and when you're dealing with budgets. I remember going through that city budget. Me and there's one other guy. We were both new on council. And both of us were going through that budget line item by line item, finding things that we didn't need to be spending money on. Okay. Um, and there were little things sometimes. I mean, we'd save a hundred dollars in one spot, and we'd save five hundred over here, maybe a thousand over here, and we and we just keep and we just kept you know grinding through it. And we kind of got belittled by some of the people that had been on council for a little while. Oh, that's nothing, that's nothing. When we're all said and done, between the two of us, and we were kind of supporting each other's ideas as we we're each finding good things to save money on. Uh, we saved a quarter of a million dollars between the two of us at five hundred dollars or fifty dollars a pop, and so when all was said and done, we took the, the mayor's budget, which was a decent budget. But there were there were th things that he was doing. He was cutting certain things. He was cutting uh, city services. He was leaving positions open to try to balance the city budget and not raise taxes, which I support not raising taxes. Um, but when all was said and done, because of the work that we put into it. Not only did we balance the budget without, and, and we could still restore funding to those positions, um, we actually added a couple positions, a couple police positions when all was said and done. And um, we had a unanimous passing by the city council of that city budget from people as far left liberal as Amy Kocha, who was on the council at the time, to uh, as far right conservative as Andy Nicholson. Every single member of council voted for that budget because we made such common sense cuts to find ways to fund things that were important to people. You talk a transportation budget. You know what? Transportation is important, but we, but I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of raising taxes on people. There are there are things that we're wasting money on. You know, I haven't gone through the state budget line item by line item. I understand. But I can guarantee there's things in there that are just we don't need. You know, perfect example at the city level, we had a Christmas decoration budget of five thousand dollars, if I remember correctly. And we cut that down to, I think it was 500 we left in there and told, you know, I'm all for Christmas. I like Christmas. I like Christmas decorations. But, but when we're talking about cutting people's jobs and cutting city services yeah. versus new decorations, okay. it's a no-brainer to me. Okay. Uh, we got a few other issues to go through quickly. Let's talk about health care funding. Um, Medicaid provides health care for one in five Wisconsin residents. Hmm. The American Hospital Association says our Medicaid reimbursements rates second lowest. Do you think they should be increased? 
I, I would say they should be increased if we could find the money. Okay. Uh, there's there's a lot of things in there that I know are, are wasteful that we can we can save money on, and I, I would say that that is certainly a priority to try to, because right now when you when you take a Medicaid patient, you lose money pretty much. So if we can figure out a way to try to allow for more people to have more access to healthcare, it's a great idea. But we we need we need people that are actually willing to do the work and go through those budgets, you know, item by item, and find those five hundred dollars savings because they add up. Uh, um, the the bill to legalize medical marijuana, now Washington mm -hmm. and Colorado le legalize recreational marijuana. Mm -hmm. Your position on those issues? Um, I would never do drugs. I'm not supportive of, of doing that. I, 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 I really kind of think that that's kind of a foolish decision to make because it can ruin your life a lot. At the same time, um, I, I think it is a personal choice to make. Um, there's a lot of things you can ruin your life. You can ruin your life with alcohol. You can ruin your life with a whole. You know, you can ruin your life with pornography. You can ruin your life with a whole lot of stuff that's out there. You know, and so should we necessarily make it illegal just because it's a bad idea? No, no I don't think it is. And you know what? There is evidence that there is some uh, medicinal value to it on the on the you know med medical side. So you know what? I, I think unless there is a pressing a pressing governmental reason why. You know, my smoking marijuana would affect your rights. I, I don't see a reason why the government should be coming in forbidding it. Okay, first offense, drunken driving. Should it be a, should it be a crime, Shay? No. Are you talking like a felony or whatever? I, I would say we, 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 what we really need to do is figure out a better way of, of dealing with the, with that issue. And 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 it's too common in our society that we want to make criminals out of people. You know we. There are better ways of trying to help people deal with <laughs> foolish, stupid decisions. Now, obviously, it's already a felony if you if you if you drink and drive and hurt somebody, injure somebody, kill somebody. Mm -hmm. That already is a crime and should be because you are hurting somebody else. Okay. And then finally, uh, what differences do you want to highlight between your Democrat and Republican opponent opponents? Um, sure. Well, you know, uh, as far as the Republican candidate goes. Um, He's really not a real candidate. You know, it's, it's it's really common to say, "Oh, look at the independent. He's not the real candidate." We got the Republican, we got the Democrat. But when he raised zero dollars, which he did, his other than the hundred eighty-five he gave himself just to, for for logistical purposes, he has had received zero donations and zero endorsements from anybody local. He's not a real candidate. Okay. Um, as far as the Democrat goes. Um, He's had two years and he hasn't done anything. He had one bill that he got passed, one bill, and it was it was changing the way that we change rules regarding opening state park trails. Not a pressing issue to the people of Green Bay. There's much bigger issues out there. There's the floodplain issue, huge issue right there, and there's dealing with some of the taxation issues, personal privacy, another huge issue that he's just on the wrong side of the fence on. Okay. And and we we need somebody who's actually willing to deal with issues and work in the Republican legislature because whoever wins the governor's race, it's pretty certain Republicans are going to uh, retain control of the state legislature. You need somebody who can work with them. And apparently Gingrich can't do it because he's had two years and he's done nothing. Okay, very good. Shay Sartwell of Green Bay is an independent candidate in Assembly District 90. Shay, thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you, sir. Thank you.